Hi guys, today we are looking at a couple of horses. Uh, I photographed this on the way home from a holiday recently. Uh, we're in our motor home and we're up quite high and I can shoot amazing uh, beautiful landscapes out the window, from out the, from through the window. Uh, I put the window down because it's usually not that clean. But it means that um, things like this when there's suns, sun setting, catching the animals. It's certainly a lovely um, opportunity. You don't have to stop. I don't, I mean, it'd be nice to stop every time you saw something nice, but you never get home that way. So anyway, I just click away and um, I end up with some good reference. And this one is um, particularly good, but I'm, I'm not happy with the way the horses are positioned. I think they're too far apart for, it's not a strong composition. So I'm going to move them together a little bit and uh, make them bigger in the scene and maybe change the foliage around a little bit. Right, let's go for drawing these beautiful horses in. If I draw one there and one there, start with their barrels, middle section. One leg straight down and then one leg on an angle. They always have a much larger thigh than their, their shin is really narrow. I won't try and be too uh, literal because I'll probably just get it wrong and that'll be a pain. So this one's got one leg, hmm, its legs in front, a bit hard to tell. Yeah, I think this closer leg is in front, and the rear leg behind, a little bit very deceptive here because of the way the grass is growing, is hiding where their feet are landing, what, this one's feet, so I'll just do a, a nice little tail, pretty little thing, and fin and the nose is hitting the ground, believe it or not, right down there, so the neck is always longer than you think. Big ears, they're not really big, but I'll draw them big. Okay, it seems to be a funny bump there, but I don't want to simplify anything either because once you start simplifying animals, they start to look a bit twee. You're better off getting in the, all the warts and all and not worry about the accuracy too much. So this pony here, I'm going to put her just a little bit back from the first one and her big frame, sort of like drawing a big square at the front here. One leg that side, one leg this side. I've got a lovely painting that I did of my husband and my little boy back in the 80s. <laughs> I might put that up to show you how I like to draw horses sometimes, paint horses. I haven't done many of them, I should have kept doing it. Uh, the other the other hoof here is right over this side. Oh, look at that, I've just got it so out of proportion. The head, where's my rubber? Any old rubber will do. The head and neck come much further down. Either that or I take the legs back. I'm going to make a decision. So I'll stick with the head being down below here. And the feet are basically at the area of at the way back where her um, jaw is. Look at that. What am I doing wrong? I'm making it too fat, aren't I? That's it. Okay. Gosh. 
Sometimes if you half close, half close your eyes, you can see the faults with your drawing. Another way is to put it in your, take a photograph of it and flip it or look at it in a mirror. Flip it one way or the other, especially animals or people. So these horses are intently listening. Okay, I'm never going to get her right, so I'll just leave it. Um, now they're both eating lots of grass. Put some shadows here coming down. Oh yes, yeah, so here we have to define where the sun's going to be. So it's about there. And so the, sh the shadows coming from the sun have to fan out. They have to centre there and come away. Otherwise, they don't make sense. I'm going to put a road in behind. There's one in front, kind of like that. They're actually on a road or they're on a, they're on a narrow area of foliage. I do want on this side some sort of a log or a post of some description. And then I want the road to go up like this. So therefore going away and maybe another fence coming down that way from a hill. Let's go for a hill. Various trees up there. This side there's a pond. Another hill. A couple of trees. There's a tree in the foreground. I might not put that in because it's going to be too distracting. So I've got the two horses. I've got their shadows. I've got I've left that plane. I haven't put any sketch marks in that area. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to wash the whole area with the background colours. I will try and do it in one go. So we'll end up with white at the top. We won't touch that. We'll go for, just have to keep using the tissue here and making sure that I've got the pale enough colours. So I'll go for a little bit of yellow all the way around like that. I'm not wetting the paper by the way. I'm just going to start, I'm, I'm going to sort of wet the paper but with paint in the brush at the same time. Yellow, orange. I'm going to go straight into some blue at the background there, across this way. I might make it a bit stronger because I know it will fade. Just splashed my paper, but it won't matter. I'm going to go back to washing my brush and putting a bit more yellow and orange into it to just give some intensity to the colours coming down here. Colours behind. I'm going to totally ignore the horses at this stage and just paint in the background. Sorry, just concentrating there for a bit. There's flare on the lens. You have to be careful sometimes <laughs> by putting a lot of colour on that you're not just doing what's on the lens itself rather than what's really there. I'm mopping up as I go. So more green up here and there. Across the centre, down here. I'm going to slowly bring the green forward and down and darken it as I come. So I'm quickly digging into this. I'll go straight over the horses, I'll ignore them and just add green. I might even go to one of my bigger brushes because I just love doing a really broad brush. See, I'm running out of paint. Trip to the shop. It's due. Now, I just 
just going to put some yellow, bright yellow in as well because of the colours that are coming through here. Not that it matters, I'll be going over them anyway. Meaning I'll... Hmm. Gosh, I'm having trouble getting as dark a green as I want. I really want it dark in the foreground there. And I can go that dark because I know it's going to fade. Okay, let's just swivel around all like that. I can still see my pencil mark, so that's okay. And while I'm doing this very dark green, I'll come back up into this area and just darken in the sides there. Brown, black, green. Trees over here. Just going to put a few in like that. Random shapes. This side as well. A bit lighter on that side. Random shapes across the centre here. Now, quickly jump into a bit of warmth and scrub out that road that I had. Coming down there. This is where this paper is not as forgiving as your, what would you call it, the, uh, the rough. The rough is easier to do this type of scrubbing out. Anyway, so that's a road behind the horses. And while I'm here with some lovely warmth, I'll add some more orangey brownie colours here. See if I can get a bit of distant detail. There's orange and red. There's that waterway is gone again. <laughs> I think I've gone over it a couple of times already. It might not end up in there. I think I'll forget that water over there. Yeah, I'll just put something over it. Um, what have I got here? Let's go for some dark blues to, in, to make this green up here a bit more interesting. Green and purple even. shadows in, lean them up to the sun, either side of that road. As you might have noticed the horses have not made an appearance yet. They're going to come in last of all. I'll just do a bit more on this road here. Like a shadow on the other side where the, let's assume there's some plants there. They're just going to run a little bit of shadow across the road, or a lot of shadow. That makes it more interesting. If you have a um, fun, the back, if the background's interesting before you put your subject matter in, then that's very helpful. I think I want to put more blue in the background now. I'm not real happy with how little blue I have so I'm going to put some on my on my brush just see if I can poke it in and push the green out almost like reverse painting I really want that blue in there because it's so it definitely is misty and blue makes mist. Add blue in the distance. Okay, I don't mind that at all. I'm happy with the edges. They're not they're a bit rough, but they're not too bad. I'll dry that off now. And just don't know if I need to add a bit more texture to it at this stage. I think I can do that a bit later on. But
Now, let me think what colour, well, I mean what brush will I use because I want to do a very dark colour at the back. Um, I'm going to put in some of the tree trunks. It's dry enough now to be able to do a straight line and to do some branches. Well, some of them, are, no, it's not quite dry enough. See, they start blending in. One way of telling if you've got your paper dry enough is it tends to flatten back out again. So these trunks are pretty much just black. They're not, there's not a lot of colour in them. They're just dark. Oh, it's raining outside, it's lovely. I think you could be able to hear that soon on the roof. We've had such a wet summer opposite to last year. So, quite fun here. I love doing this sort of random landscapey type of stuff. So, just in the middle here, if you wash a brush off, say if I got the purple on my brush, so just, just to make a very dull grey. And then I'll put in these um, fence posts. They can get darker and stronger as you get closer to the, say, the road edge there. So even the trees behind, these are different. These are fence posts. Just fatten them up a little bit so that you could tell what they are. <laughs> sure, I'll put a little bit of support on that one. And over here, I can't see any trees, but there would be some there, so I'll just put a few verticals in. If you were to get a bit of purple on your brush and just run out the shadows from each of the tree trunks. Once again, pointing them up to, or coming out from the sun, just draw a line from the sun outwards and that's where you put your shadows in, even if you can't see them. I shall now do shadows from this fence post, but they're pretty much uh, like that. Purple again, the side of the road here, and I'll shadow up the foliage that's growing there with a bit of purple. As I get towards the front here, I can be a little bit more creative, but I know I've got a horse there, so I'm going to have to not worry too much. Here is the big post and that will definitely be coming out of the ground. There's a support post beside it. Now my horses, I'm going to draw them in now and hopefully I'll be able to see where they are. I can see this little one. I probably could have in hindsight pressed a bit harder. So I'll start with just black. I could be a bit creative and go for a purpley colour. Add a little bit of purple to the black and see what that does. So, I should look up every now and then. See. Basically, uh, I'm having a little bit of trouble seeing her, so I probably could have gone darker. So that's a lesson to me and to you guys to draw it in. If you're going to paint over the subject matter, make them really dark. So luckily I've got my reference so I can just re, sort of redo that. I've got a few marks here that I know are accurate. I can see the legs. The reason I can go, I can do it this way with watercolour, you can just do the, the light first and then come straight over the top. Only going to end up being a bit wonky. Does that matter? <laughs> we'll see. Actually, it's a beautiful deep brown red colour. So I might just try just doing a little bit of the burnt umber. Straight back. Slightly curved rump. Nice brown, nice rounded chest there and 
going to move her front leg back. I think that changes a little bit. This leg forward. Okay, I won't do the, um, I won't do the, what do you call it, the hooves yet. Maybe just a hint of one because um, they might be in deep grass. So I've yet to decide on that. Now this baby here is quite a bit lighter, but that doesn't matter. I'll still have her dark. Being lighter in the photograph means I can see more detail. But I don't want to be tempted to put detail in. I just want to do the silhouette. They're backlit and they're as dark as they can be. Now, how high up did she go? I think I had her higher than the other one. Neck coming down like that. Chest. One leg like this. A little bit like horses that are racing. Sometimes you can just do an impression of a horse. It doesn't have to be 100% realistic, especially if, you, if it's a part of the whole landscape. You're rough on the trees. You can be rough on the horses, so to speak, and the painting of them, of course. Oh, look at that beautiful leg. Perfect. Lump, bump, straight down another bump. Yep. And a little bit of a uh, area there behind. Okay. Just going to thicken those up a tiny bit. Right, um, for these, uh, okay, for that pole, I've got that, that one's no good, I'm going to have to put another one in here to take the, uh, the, the wire. <laughs> I've managed to get the poles on the wrong side of the road to where I was planning on having them. That's okay, I'll put it up here. There. Now I'll get some thin wire on my brush, so to speak. Just do a couple of little indicators there that there's wires going from one to the other. And they're in a kind of a paddock. Same with those ones at the back there, make sure they're th very thin in the distance and then coming to a thicker point there. Okay, now I shall just take a bit more of brown on my brush and push it into these babies. Even though they're already black, I'm just going to put some brown over the top. This is not watercolour technique, this is acrylic technique. Just to get them a bit more density. This one needs to have a tail. It's got a beautiful tail hanging out there, so I just want to put that in. A bit more brown around the head, just to show that they're not totally cardboard cutouts. Brown on top of that black. The black is fading, you see, that's why I can happily do that. Now, the next fun thing to do is the purple shadow coming off these girls into this grass. So I'm just going to put purple on my brush and just drag line, an irregular line going out like that and then like that. Where's the light here? This one goes this way, like that. Then we've got, the, of course, the shape of the body. 
bit hard to tell where the shape of the body is on this one because it's not in the photo itself. Just very long legs. So having done that shadow, I'll come back with some strong grass, especially around the base of these poles, posts. They're going to have beautiful shadows as well. Everything comes from the sun, so look at the sun, draw the shadow coming across there. There, 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 there. Lovely shadow from this baby here coming that way. So now I shall just go back to the, the bottom of the uh, horses here and emphasize the shadow's texture in the grass. Okay. Very simple. I need to add the white now, which I always do, uh, because I find that leaving space for white, which is the traditional method, tends to sometimes um, stifle the creativity. So I'm just going to go with this horse being accurate. I'm sure if I was taking more time here I could trace it and get it exactly right. And I suggest you guys do that too. If I was doing this as a commercial job I would definitely trace the horses. So don't go thinking you have to be able to draw everything. It's not true. Commercial artists trace everything, almost. Just putting on a little bit of the light reflecting for the sun on the top of these babies. And once again, I'm not being too, too thingy, too accurate with them because uh, they've got to be just as loose as the rest of the painting. That's, that's the style, you just have to loose this everywhere. If you want to do realism, realism's everywhere. So you, you want to decide on the style of painting you want to do and then stick with that. I need to go a lot thinner for this up the back here. Even changing brushes is an issue. There's some people who say you should stick to the same brush throughout a painting so it's got the same feel. But I'm a little bit more realistic than that so I go to different brushes. Just going to put a little bit of light reflect on the top of this wire. a bit more up here. Do the light one. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of think that's it. I could keep playing around with blades of grass if I was doing um, oil painting or acrylic I'd probably add more colour in the foreground. I don't know that it's warranted here, but let's see. Let's see if it, it is with the water, watercolour. Sometimes just giving the eye some really sharp detail in the foreground on a painting like this helps. Yeah, I don't mind it. Touch of orange on that road. Doesn't hurt. The other thing that's fun to do, I don't know if I'll do it. No, I probably won't. Is to get some white on your um, on a toothbrush and uh, splatter in the foreground. 
Always a fun thing to do. I won't do that. I've got white here on my thick brush, able to give a bit of texture into these areas. Might even, to tell you the truth, just lighten this back area here. A bit more detail in there wouldn't hurt. There's one thing I need to do actually now that I've, I'm looking at it. Get very pale blue, maybe on a brush that's a little bit more, what's the word, manageable. I hope you can still see this all right. <laughs> Get halfway through and decide to check the camera, honestly. I'm just going to just draw in some of the, a hint of the foliage that's behind here that's so hard to see because the light's in your eyes. Be just fun to have that in. Really just a hint. So that means you want it as pale as possible, almost white. Soften up the detail. Grab some of the random colours that are in the palette. Put them back there. And while I'm at it, I'm going to just darken some of those little trees there. That I'll put a bit of blue, purpley, green, and just add some shadowy detail so that it looks interesting at the back. Rub, just flicking the brush sideways helps like that. I'll run that up into those areas. Make sure the shadows are true to whatever you, shape you put there. Try and have it so that that works. Right. Now you can do one more fun thing, and that is to get a brush that's nice and what's that good acrylic style brush. I'll just see what I've got. that be? It's a bristle brush. I just wet the brush sometimes. I'm just going to just take a tiny bit off the top of this horses in so much as just make them a little bit rounded. Sometimes it's the off the bottom that you need to do to round them up. I'm just rubbing back fresh water on my brush, a daggy old bristle brush, just taking off some of the colour underneath the horse here. Not overdoing this, just a touch here and there. Just to give that the ponies a bit of three dimension. And at the same time, oops, three dimensions to these posts. Scrub back, a little bit of reverse light comes in, like reflected light. Hits the ground, bounces back. But not up there. I think I'll darken that. Will I darken? No, I won't. Okay. I might lighten this. Looking for ways to balance the, the, the painting a bit. Okay. Fiddle. Time out for fiddling. That's my painting. I'll hold it square on. <laughs> Couple of horses in the sunny field. I'll think of a, a more creative name. 
I used to have a gallery owner who insisted that uh, I, I do creative names for paintings instead of just a description of what they are. So that said, thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you next time.